Welcome to the Hall of My Art. Our next speaker is Dr. Timothy Owens Moore. He's the author of two books. The first one being The Science of Melanin, Dispelling the Myth. The second one, Dark Matters, Dark Secrets. And that is all of us. So now please give a big w round welcome of applause to Dr. Timothy Owen Moore. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, Greetings. and little ones. Uh, Black Christ Conference. Yes, I've written a book on melanin, and the new recent book is called Dark Matters, Dark Secrets. But I think with this first conference, here, it's testimony that there are people in the community that are trying to do things. There are a few proud and chosen that are trying to learn. And as we learn, we then what? Pass it on. So as with the next few lectures and conferences come on, the whole of my eyes is going to be filled. Mm -hmm. Because once people start hearing and understanding that, wow, there's another knowledge, not so much knowledge, another truth out there, because there's always two sides of truth. You know, There's more information out there. And that's what people are lacking, if you really think about it, information. We're all right here now struggling with uh, where do we stand in, a li in life? Where, where is our position? And for me, a lot of the things that I do that are right is try to kind of reset our minds. I mean, we know that we've gone through the whole enslavement process, being prisoners here in America, being taught by others. And if you think about it, we're the only people that have our children taught by somebody else, mm -hmm. which really then dictates how it is that our knowledge base may not be something that's for us. So that means if we aren't writing our own books, establishing our own uh, organizations, just met the brother here, Brother Kurt, so he's at Clark Atlanta, I'm at Clark Atlanta, he's no longer at Clark Atlanta, he's doing some positive things in the community. Got a little newsletter here called Divine Wisdom, right? Uh, a homeopathic type of institute? Uh, spiritual. Spiritual, okay. With an indigenous, with an indigenous perspective. All right. Yeah. So beyond the academic setting, there are ways that we can take our knowledge to the people, and that's exactly what Kurt is doing. What I want to do today is just present some information to you in the context of melanin, black people, and also maybe take it back to looking at Christ, since that's what this conference is about, and many people are probably here for that type of information. Let me just show this first slide here, or transparency, because I use this as the front cover of my book, because on the front is a picture of Akhenaten and Nefertiti with their children, and the sun shining. Well, the sun is shining, and at the end of these rays are hands, and also near the face region or nose region are ankhs. And I'm pretty sure many of you know what the ankh is in terms of African terminology. The ankh is a symbol for life. It's the symbol that then Christians have used for the so-called cross. So for myself, looking back on history, you start to go back to see that really there's nothing new. Things have been done. People have now used it in different ways, and that's why we're, we're now here confused about many realities. So this is back in some place called Kemet. Kemet, what is Kemet? Egypt, where's Egypt? Africa, well, you know how the so-called books kind of misconstrue things. Many of our encyclopedias, you go in there and Charles reading it and you look into Egypt and all you see is white images. No reality, that's, that's an African place. So given that context, uh, Jesus went to Africa, went to Tibet, went to India. He went all over studying. But guess what? Many of those travels and books are not in your regular Bible, right? I think Amrani was talking about several books, and I came in late, didn't hear all of the books, but was the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus mentioned? Mm -hmm. The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ. Anybody familiar with the text? I raise your hands. These are missing books of the Bible. Okay, they can't be missing because they're in my hand, huh? The books that have been taken out because it makes it easier to explain however King James did it when he explained it in the Bible. Okay, so we now start to understand, hey, maybe there's some confusion about Christianity or religion if people have been manipulating the so-called discussion of it. 
Uh, I don't know if you talked about the Nicene Conference, uh, where the Europeans went in and they manipulated and said, this is what we're going to call Christianity. And that was like 325 AD. So given that we're talking about a time period that is well before slavery, well before the European conquest, but it's on the downfall of what? Egypt. So the point is, back in the time when Egypt was flourishing, people were going there, let's, let's use the word Kemet, because we gotta start kind of using terminology that really helps us to re-establish our position. Yeah. Kemet really means the land of the blacks, okay? So if we go to Kemet, where Jesus went, he was studying under masters. They say the same thing about Moses. He was, what, got all this great knowledge, but he still had to go to what? Africa to get information, to learn. And that's what we don't understand today because we just think of Africa as backwards. We think of Africa as no buildings, no knowledge, no nothing. They've contributed everything we know about science, technology, and civilization. It wasn't civilization going on in Europe during the time periods that people were building pyramids, temples, literature, art. No, people in other parts of the world, due to the environments they were living in, were struggling. Africa presents a different context because people have time to what sit back and read, time to think. If you think about it today, bring it up to this current day, mm, yeah, this current day society, many people don't have time to think. TV, radio, soccer practice, kids, children, work. So don't take the time to what reflect on yourself. Well, that's what Jesus did in terms of some of the books that were missing in the Bible. There was a few, or there was really one particular um, chapter I wanted to read. It was uh, chapter 55. It's really at the end of the section on life and works of Jesus in Egypt. So there's actually eight chapters that have been removed. And again, this whole book has many chapters, but I just wanted to talk about it in context of where he had been going in terms of reaching a spiritual state that was that made him the phenomenal person that he was. But we have to understand, because you did mention what the world's 16 crucified saviors, he wasn't the only one. There were many others. He was just one that the system has utilized as one person that has had a great manifestation on people. What we need to study is how he did that. What did he go through? Because what all of us have that ability to reach that so-called Christ consciousness, right? Chapter, just a few parts, or the last part of the life and works. Chapter 55 says, Jesus passes the seventh brotherhood test, and in the purple room of the temple receives the seventh, the highest degree, the Christ. He leaves the temple a conqueror. Now prior to this, you know about Muhammad with Islam, you know, he had to go fast and pray for 40 days, 40 nights. The same thing with Jesus. He had to go somewhere. He had to fast and pray. Fasting is very important. Praying is very important. What are you doing? Tuning into who? Self. Rather than having a television tell you a vision, right? Rather than having a radio come in and put thoughts in your mind. So in the past, when people reached this so-called state, this higher state of consciousness, you had to have an environment that was conducive to that like a hall of my eye, potentially. You know, I, I, like to thank, I didn't get a chance to do that, but thank Brother Pierre Carson for even putting this together. You know, I just, I just think this is, this is phenomenal in itself. He now has a new colleague, Dorothy Anderson. Now they, uh, we have, I'm pretty sure, some more phenomenal events that will be occurring. But the point is, we then have to take that knowledge, pass it on, as the, the term goes, each one teach one, right? So in this chapter, it says, the work of Jesus in the chamber of the dead was done. In the temple purple room, he stood before the Hierophant. Hierophant is spelled H-I-E-R-O-P-H-A-N-T. It's really like a term for a priest, a very important person that was in that time of Kemet. The, the training, it's like, have you heard of George G.M. James, Stolen Legacy? Okay. In Stolen Legacy, he gives a breakdown of the Egyptian mystery system. Well, it really wasn't a mystery. It was a mystery to white people. So it was a way to kind of make, write things up so they wouldn't understand it. Because if you think about hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics is a Greek term for symbols. 
symbols. That's all it was for Europeans. Now, for us, it had meaning. They were words of life. It wasn't hieroglyphics. They were called medunatur. So medunatur means words from God. So for us, symbols mean a whole lot of things. That's why we say, y'all, that's fat. You mean that's fat? You big? No, that's cool. What do you mean by that? So we have, in our terminology, different ways that we express things. So you can see the same thing with symbols, okay? For example, with reading. For us today, reading is from left to right. You can't read backwards or up and down. But the, the so-called metanatur, you can read the same symbols, up and down, left to right, or even the other way. Even though it's the same symbols, it has a different meaning. So it relates, again, like I said, to how we express ourselves and relate today. It says, and he was clothed in purple robes, and all the brothers stood. The Hierophant arose and said, and with the, this purple, this purple is kind of important, because have any of you heard of the chakra system? Okay, spiritual centers that are in our body? Well, the highest one is the so-called crown chakra, and it relates to an area in the brain called the pineal gland. gland. And if we have time to discuss it today, we will show where that is. The point is, those who are clairvoyant, who can see you know, things that we can't see, you know, everybody says there's an aura that people have. Well, there are some people that can really see the aura around a person. Well, when people reach a certain state of consciousness, there may be like a glow around their head. And you've seen many of their pictures, and not this, the blonde, blue-haired eyes, Jesus that you mostly see, you know. But the example here is that you usually see a picture of Christ with a so-called halo around the head. The crown chakra produces a color in the spectrum of purple. So this purple room, I think, is very significant. And the purple robe that he has on during this time period really does relate to this higher state of consciousness. So it's now what? All connected. That's the point I'm trying to make there. This is a royal day for all the hosts of Israel. In honor of their chosen son, we celebrate the great Passover feast. And then he said to Jesus, Brother man, most excellent of men, in all the temple test, you have won out. Six times before the bar of right, you have been judged. And six, 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 so this time is the seventh one. Six times you have received the highest honors man can, can give. And now you stand prepared to take the last degree. Upon your brow, I place this diadem. Diadem. So again, brow, this so-called higher state of consciousness. Again, the crown chakra, purple. And in the great lodge of the heavens and earth, you are the Christ. This is your great Passover rite. You are a neophyte no more, but now a mastermind. Now man can do no more, but God himself will speak and will confirm your title and degree. Go on your way, for you must preach the gospel of good will to men in peace on earth, must open up the prison doors and set the captives free. And while the Hierophant yet spoke, the temple bells rang out. A pure white dove descended from the above and sat on Jesus', Jesus head. And then a voice that shook the very temple said, This is the Christ, and every living creature said, Amen. The great doors of the temple swung ajar. The Logos journeyed on his way, a conqueror. Eighteen years of his life is missing from the Bible that we read from the so-called King James Version. Eighteen years. Here's just one little example of something that he had gone through during that time period. So the point is, as I present this piece, then to go on to talk about the dark matters, dark secret, is our minds can't be locked in to something that the European is telling us about reality. Their reality is not ours. So when you start talking about history, there is no way we're going to get a grounding of history in the churches today because in the pulpit they're not teaching history. It's an emotional sin where people's emotions are generated and charged up. But what did you really learn after that so-called feeling? So what should be coming from the pulpit is talking about what? History. Because once you have a grounding in history, you now walk differently, don't you? Hmm. So that's the reason why I, I have done my, or taken the attempt to try to put some relevance to this topic of melanin to make sure that we understand it that it is very important for us as African people. Europeans don't have a lot of melanin, therefore it's not something that's interesting to them or of value to them. Well, they're now dying because they ain't got it because of skin cancer and all. But the important thing is that in the past, it was praised. <laughs> why are we scared of it today? They called the sun Ra, or Atan. 
So Nefertiti, Akhenaten, they came up with this monotheism, you know, praising what? One God. So for them, the God was sun. And basically the sun produces what? Life. Without the sun, there is no life. It's the generator. And what are we? Nothing but walking generators. Without the sun's energy, we then don't exist. So we are like plants. Plants need the sun. The so-called photosynthetic process, which you may remember from biology class, right? Okay. So in photosynthesis, there's a very important so-called, uh, very important chemical that helps out with this transformation. It's called chlorophyll. Plants have chlorophyll. It's a pigment. We have something called chlorophyll, but we call it melanin. So when you start breaking things down in its most simplistic manner, oh, okay, now I can understand, and now I can see. So that's the reason why, again, we need to have discussions pertaining to melanin. Any questions before I go on? In terms of the, because like I said, I'm going to move beyond the religion or Christ part only because I'm trying to now move into what I was brought here to talk about. But any questions? Uh, I guess most people knew that there were some missile, missing books of the Bible. That's, that's not okay. So it's just a matter of now reading and understanding that. So as we start to look at pictures of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, you see, they, they always said that Akhenaten was, they even questioned it, they say he's a homosexual because he's wearing, he wears woman type wear. Uh, they said he was deformed because his head had a long shape to it and the term is called dolicephalic. But they considered him to be deformed, he was something weird. So you got now Europeans writing history saying <laughs> something about this man, okay? He came from a long tradition of, you know, great people, but he's now some deformed person. Nefertiti's image, you know, it's written, it's, it's on the temples. But when you start messing around with the European, this is their picture of Nefertiti. You know. So she's now no longer an African woman. She's quite clearly a European woman with no pigment, living in hot Africa. <laughs> that doesn't kind of make too much sense, does it? Albino, living in Africa, like that. So, there are several books to read to kind of correct the history. And I don't know if you ever read, read Egypt Revisited by Ivan, yeah, edited by Ivan Van Sertema. Egypt Revisited by Ivan Van Sertema. This is a chapter from, this is a chapter from Asa Hilliard's work. down okay. so what I have to do is probably keep moving the transparencies uh, up here I just have to keep moving the transparencies. you can say lower or higher okay. so this bust that you just saw of this white Nefertiti the bust that we recognize today as that of Nefertiti was found 1912 to 1913 in grid 47 at Armana by professors Herman Rank and Ludwig Borchardt. It was out of circulation from that time until 1920 when it was found in Berlin. It has no inscriptions. Identification of this as a bust of Nefertiti is done mainly by reference to the royal headdress and by its proximity to a destroyed bust of Akhenaten in an artist's workshop. Also, it is inlaid with lapsus lazuli, an expensive precious stone that was reserved for royalty. What is important is that there are numerous wall reliefs that depict Nefertiti with certainty, yet they are very different from the Berlin bust. One of them is shown above. So you can see that she got the thick lips, not the skinny European lips. Uh, she has a, she a, a long, you can't really say a long head with her because of the headdress that's on, but quite clearly that ain't the same one that you see that they're marketing, okay? Several Egyptologists claim that Nefertiti was comedic. Coltrell says that Queen Tai's brother was I, or A, later to become the king, and that A was the father of Nefertiti. Alfred also says that Nefertiti was I's daughter, since he is referred in some inscriptions as the father-in-law of the king. However, since most 18th dynasty kings and many wives had many wives, the reference to a single father-in-law as certainly the father of the queen Nefertiti cannot be a confident one. So we can get into all the parentage and the families, 
But the point is about the time periods. The most dynamic and unquestionably in full black dynasties in Egypt were one through six, 1825, 18 dynasty. There was no question. It was a black dynasty. So to throw these other images in there, again, it just misconstrues history and it makes us not understand things in context. So as we deal with, again, the black Christ, we just have to understand <clears throat> history is kind of important rather than dealing with just some terms that may be stated during that Sunday morning and you leave and not know what the heck was ever said. So this whole thing about color. So color was despised, but this is just a little ad from, uh, you know how they have those Sunday papers and they got ads for things you can buy. Retinol, wrinkles diminish, some kind of vitamin A cream. Just one example of they're doing whatever they can to make their skin look nice. Well, what is it in African people or people of hue, humans, that give them color? The pigment, melanin. It also helps to what reduce the aging process or diminish its aging process. So that's why you, you probably look at me, he's this young guy, he, he can't do all this stuff. You know, well, I got a little age on me. But the point is, us as African people, you can't really tell, right? For Europeans, somebody's the same age as you, they may look like your grandma was on. <laughs> yeah. So what's protecting us? So what's doing that? It's the melanin. So for them, they've always despised you, talked about you, but they're trying to be like you. Tanning salons. They're hanging out in tanning salons. Why? To try to darken their skin. So I'm just trying to present a context for why this melanin thing is kind of a controversy or is confusing to some because the people who control the dim dissemination of information don't necessarily like you. So, so one example of uh, how they tried to get rid of wrinkles. Now this is from this past Sunday's newspaper. It says, Botox bashes. Dr. Peter Abramson treats Merle Van Hutenhurst's face for crow's feet during one of the weekly Botox sessions. It's much more relaxing and able to do it this way. Other parts cut off. Botox, do you have any idea what that is? What they're talking about, anybody happen to read that or see that? Botulism, they're actually putting in botulism toxin into the skin to reduce wrinkles. So now no longer creams, they're spending $400 to get an injection because what happens is, is the toxin shuts down the nerves so the nerves don't produce the wrinkles. The point is, they're going to that extreme <laughs> to look young again. <coughs> extreme, putting a poison in your brain, your, your head, just to reduce wrinkles. And these are the same people we're learning from? So you know we ain't taking these things, we ain't doing that. But anything new for young, to keep you young, they're gonna, they gonna pick up on. Prior to this, remember the whole melatonin uh, phenomena? Called melatonin mania, I wrote an article back that in 96. Melatonin, they said how it keeps you young, keeps you vibrant. And so it was a whole craze and people now taking melatonin. Well, we'll maybe get into that or save that for another lecture that we have to give. But with melatonin, it's a chemical, a hormone that comes from a part of the brain called the pineal gland. As you age, it may diminish in terms of how much it's produced. Okay, check. So children have much more melatonin than we may have. But Europeans definitely are probably having a less amount as they age, therefore that's why they may age quicker also. So melanin, melanin, melatonin, two separate things, but the point is they both contribute to what? The aging process. So for us, we have a natural mechanism that can handle that. For Europeans, they searching for toxins, they searching for creams, they searching, searching, searching for something to be young again. So what they searching for is melanin. Melanin, a complex biopolymer, meaning that it's almost like an indestructible substance. It's uh, something that produces a dark color. Everybody knows about darkness. Darkness absorbs 
takes in. And as it takes in, it can also convert, transduce. So this melanin helps, as I have in the first book, The uh, Science of Melanin, three main things that, it, that I say we can look at it as. It's a neutralizer of harmful free radicals. So that's the first thing it's doing here, and we talk about the skin. It's neutralizing, see, the, 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 the radiation from the sun, yes, is deadly. Yeah, you stay out in the sun, yeah, we can get skin cancer too. We have something that protects, protects us and helps, but Europeans lack a lot of that, therefore they succumb to more skin cancers than we do, like melanoma. So the ultraviolet radiation, radiation can produce these toxic things, making your skin wrinkle, get spots, and you know, start to have some problems, aging quickly. Well, melanin helps to reduce the free radicals or the pro those chemicals that cause the deterioration of the cells. With cancer, it's really a destruction of the DNA. DNA, DNA, the so-called life of the body. Without DNA, you don't have what, the progression of life. Well, if the DNA is changed and converted, you got deformities, cancer. So what happens is that melanin can help to kind of protect against that by neutralizing free radicals that cause a, a total change in that DNA. And there's a, some people talk about even with hair processing. When you get your hair processed, you're talking about proteins that are used to what change the structure of the hair so it is now fixed in a certain way. That means it's fixed, it's broke, it can't move anymore. Well, that's the same thing that can occur when you're changing the DNA in terms of how the sun can affect the skin. So not getting into the hair processing, I'll leave that alone, maybe another discussion. The issue is that the changing chemical nature of the body can present some problems down the line. So the reason why I have this particular figure is to show that chemicals that are in our environment, pesticides, drugs that people take, cocaine, LSD, normal things, not normal, but natural things like maybe opiates, alcohol, these things may be absorbed by melanin more so than other types of chemicals. Therefore, you can probably think of how it can stay in the system much longer. Now, I've never been on an LSD trip. Just heard that people who go on LSD, LSD trips, they can trip years down the line. So they may have taken it at age 14 or something like that, but when they get to maybe 25, they had another trip. Something in their life triggered some chemical emotion, yeah, chemical emotions, some chemical triggers that then caused them to have that same trip that they had years ago. So there are certain areas of the brain that can what? Absorb these things. So in the skin, we have something called skin melanin, but now we have something in the brain called neuromelanin. Almost functions the same way. So this first thing is, like I said, it, it's a neutralizer of harmful, harmful substances, toxic substances. So any of these things could potentially be toxic. Well, absorbing it, try to make, make the body last a little longer. Number two is it is a nerve conduction facilitator. And we haven't gotten to the brain yet. We haven't talked about the nerves. But when we say nerve conduction facilitator, it makes things go faster. So if there's an area of the brain that contains melanin, there may be a faster transduction of the what chemical processes. So you can think quick. I mean, you, I think you know about talking with, conversing with Europeans. It's just a lag time there. It's just, I mean, even playing basketball. I mean, they set shot and, you know, just pass us. I mean, we do all kinds of things. Even think about driving a car, you know. Europeans got two hands on the wheel, you know. Us, you got one finger, hand on the console, radio, <laughs> eating your food, you know. That's brain functioning that causes that to happen. So there are areas of the brain that can function quicker with melanin present. The third thing is energy transformer. Hmm, energy transformer. What we're saying is that everywhere in the body that melanin is located, it helps to transduce the energy that's out there into something the body can recognize. Energy transformer, one example. Light, fluorescent light, candescent light, ultraviolet light. Those lights are like photons of energy. That light, you don't really see it. You see it in terms of light, but you can't see the photons. But your body has to transmit that so that you understand it. So in the retina, the back part of the eyeball is a pigmented cell layer. Without that pigment, a person's blind, you can't see. Many, many of you who are from the north have been in the snow, seen snow, you go out there on a bright day, it's kind of blinding in that, that white snow because there's nothing, ref it's like too much reflection, there's nothing absorbing the light. So in the back of the eye, melanin helps to absorb the so-called light 
and it helps to transfer it so then you can see. One example. Ear. You have inner ear melanin. So deep in the center of the so-called ear, there's an inner ear place. It has a membrane, and that membrane contains this melanin. Well, it helps to convert the sound waves that are out there into something the body can understand. So there may be a reason why the thumping bass is something that's key and critical to us and our culture, the drum rhythm, versus Europeans, high-pitched guitar or things that don't have rhythm and things that don't necessarily move us. So it may be at the level of the ear and hearing that may present that. It's dangerous though, and I was to present that in the second book, about hearing. Hearing is a really detailed, complex mechanism, and it functions by hair cells working. So if I whispered right now, and I don't want to whisper because I don't want to destroy the <coughs> recording of the presentation here, but if I whispered, your hair cells would not shake a lot. It'd be hard for them to respond. If you scream, they shake too much. So these real tiny, delicate hair cells, if you think about it, all that thumping bass these kids are listening to, that's the future hearing aid society. Because you're destroying that hair cell, and as they age, you get older, what'd you say? They can't hear you, because they destroy the mechanisms during these so-called younger years. So where you have in the ear this melanin functioning, it helps to convert the energy, well, the sound waves, into something the body can recognize. So that's what we mean by energy transformer. So those are three main things that we can then look at, melanin, but we don't want to get caught up in thinking it's just skin melanin that is attributing to behavior. As you, you, know, you gotta understand that, the skin has nothing to do with someone's behavior. It's, it's your brain. It's your brain and nervous system that produces behavior. So given that, that's where the challenge is for us to kind of talk about. Now, I think, uh, Kurt, I don't know if you know, Hen Henrietta Lacks, wasn't there a woman who was used for a lot of the gynecological, gynecological, gynecological studies in the past? It came from the HeLa cells. HeLa cells. cells. So her name was Henrietta Henry Lacks or something like that? Helen something, brother. yeah, I forgot. So there's, I a, forgot. so there's an African woman or African American woman that was used in experimentation for what people know a lot today about some types of cells that are... So the HeLa cell is one of the biggest tissue culture cells to study for experimental research, historically speaking, okay. in laboratories. Right. Yeah. So African people have always been studied. We've always been investigated. Just didn't know you were. Tuskegee experiment went on for 40 years. You just didn't know. So now we know as we start to what, look at the way knowledge has been used. I had to come across this magazine called Whole Earth. I found it very deep. This was back in 1992. And I found it deep because on the front, is that a European woman? Asian woman? That's an African woman sitting on a computer chip. So you see the computer chip lines in the back. On the side, DNA. On the left side, some molecules. I won't say it's melanin, but some molecules. And over here, the meta mm -hmm. So it's like, man, now what are they trying to tell us? But what are they studying and saying? 